us this morning. And I want to bring you back to Los Angeles and, and frame the debate on immigration front and center here at the annual conference of the National Council of La Raza, the nation's largest national Hispanic civil rights and advocacy organization. What are we to do? about the crisis on the border. You know, in just a few hours, Texas Governor Rick Perry is expected to announce his current solution for the crisis, sending a thousand National Guard troops to the region as we all continue to wait for a solution out of Washington. Still nothing from either the House or the Senate. Meanwhile, Texas Senator Ted Cruz is, well, putting the blame for all of the issues on Harry Reid and the president. The border is not secured. 90,000 children are expected to come into this country illegally this year. And Harry Reid says the border is secure. Uh, I'll tell you who's holding these kids ransom. is Harry Reid and the president because their view is don't do anything to fix the problem. Joining me here in Los Angeles, the director of civic engagement for the National Council of La Raza, Clarissa Martinez de Castro, and Daniel Garza, executive director of the Libre Initiative. To both of you, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's talk about this issue because the fact is that Washington doesn't seem to be able to or willing to deal with the real problems that we're facing, not only in the border, but now throughout the country. Clarissa, what is the possible fix to this issue? Nobody argues that this is a complicated situation, uh, but first and foremost, there is a crisis in Central America that is producing refugees not only at our doorstep, but at the doorstep of every country in the region. So I think we have to start with the facts. Now, addressing root causes, something Senator Menendez has talked about, it's going to take a while. In the meantime, the United States has laws about how possible refugees need to be treated, our own laws and international laws. And we should follow that because we ask other countries to do exactly that. And you know, Daniel, the fact is that the inability of the House this year to even deal with immigration reform is a problem. You know, if there were comprehensive immigration reform, maybe some of these issues would have been dealt with in a systematic way so that these kids wouldn't have to feel that their only option to get to the United States is across cross illegal. No, I think you're absolutely right, Jose. I mean, this is, I think the, the, there's complicity on both sides and there's blame, you know, to share uh, equally here. I yeah, think but the it, House it, is controlled it, by Republicans. We well, agree it, on that. It, well, it is. Okay. But the thing is also that there has been an intractability on the Democrat side on their fixed position of a path to citizenship while the Republicans have been saying, let's, let's uh, talk about visa reform. So there has been little in reconciliation of you know the both sides of, of this issue, and you haven't seen that sort of bipartisan spirit on on this issue. And are you answering my question though? I think that the House has a responsibility to deal with one way or another, an up or down vote on an issue the Senate dealt with in a bipartisan way over a year ago. I, I agree with that 100 percent. There is an obligation by the House. Uh, inaction is inexcusable. Inaction uh, should not occur, should not go any further. I think this situation that we have on the border actually uh, cries out for, for reform and, and we should move towards that. Here's the interesting thing. I mean, if you mentioned Perry is sending troops to the border. We are losing the facts in this whole conversation. Nobody is pouring over the border. The reason we know how many children there are is because they're being apprehended. In well, other they're words, handing themselves in in many cases. Exactly. In other words, the billions of dollars that we spent on border enforcement, that's worked. But Clarissa, the fact of the matter is that kids keep coming over the border and no one sees anything really happening. I, I think what had happened in this case, and this is to, to the fault of the president, is that he has been taking unilateral executive action uh, because of his frustration and his ineptitude in trying to get something done. You know, he sees the inaction from the Republican side, of course, and I think they are to blame as well. But, but here you see clearly that the president's policies have actually induced and incentivized the, you know, this rush to the border. You know what? I've, I've heard that quite a bit and I also realized that it was at the very moment that Republicans in the House were, were going to be forced to admit their colossal failure in leadership for moving immigration reform forward that they launched on to this issue on children to start doing again the two things they've done on immigration blame the president whom we've had some serious disagreements with and say kill DACA the reality here is there is a crisis in Central America people are fleeing to every single country in the region 
And our answer should not be to take away protections from children. People should have a day in court and prove their case. Jose, I agree with that. I, I think, you know, we, we, this is a test of our national character. And we have to take care of the children and accommodate for their interests. And I, I think what has been tragic about all of this is that here we failed to get immigration reform. And now the only kind of legislation tied to immigration that, that, that we're going to be able to pass is how fast we can deport these children. Children who are victims, of, you know, of refugee status, you know, who are uh, victims of the sex trade, of gang violence, of the drug trade. And so I think this is tragic, you know, that the inaction on both sides, culpability on both sides has led to this. And, you know, one of the things I like to do, because America is so wide in the people that make up the fabric of this society. Yes. Daniel, for example, you that have a very strong position on, on this, as well as Clarissa, you, uh, as a kid, were picking vegetables and going from state to state with your parents. Absolutely. I was born in Central California uh, uh, during the grape season. Uh, my parents picked uh, apples, pears, peaches in the state of Washington, small town of Toppenish. And then in Nebraska, we hoed beets. So, you know, I lived that migrant lifestyle. And so I sympathize with those folks who come, you know, for the American dream. And, and you know, we want to make sure that we accommodate for, for you know, th th those aspirations as well. Daniel and Carissa, thank you so much for being thank with you, us today. Thank you, and thank you for receiving me at the, ca the Conference of La Raza. Congratulations. Yes, Thank absolutely. you so very much. It's an honor to be here. And